welcome to the focus. Today we're going to the Electromyography Laboratory to meet with Dr. David Gabriel. And here he is. David, can you tell me a little bit about your research? Sure. Um, the lab is concerned with two areas. Uh, one is how the nervous system controls skeletal muscle so that you can become stronger or faster, whether you're concerned with sport or as a result of some sort of rehabilitation program. Okay. And the second area is innovating new methods for measuring muscle electrical activity because that's how we assess how the nervous system controls uh, skeletal muscle. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, it's called electromyography. Mm -hmm. And electromyography is very similar to electrocardiography or EKG. So if you, yep. So if you've ever watched one of those TV hospital shows where somebody goes into cardiac arrest, yeah. and they have to put electrodes on the rib cage to, to monitor in, on the computer screen. You see that little blip that you get in the background? Mm -hmm. That's the EKG signal. And so instead of putting electrodes on the rib cage to measure cardiac muscle electrical activity, we put those same electrodes on skeletal muscles such as the biceps or the quadriceps of the upper leg and uh, measure the electrical activity that comes out of them during a muscle contraction. So I've gone through some of the testing that you've done in the lab. I lost a little bit of leg here. Got yeah. shocked a few times, but it's all in the name of science. Yeah. So why don't we go find out what that means. In your lab, your walls are covered in copper. Can you tell me yes. why? The inner room of this lab is called a Faraday cage and the copper wire keeps out electromagnetic interference from lights overhead, electrical sockets, because muscle electrical activity is so small that any electromagnetic interference will just drown it out and we won't be able to measure it. And can you tell me what your most current research is looking at? Right now what we're looking at is how people recover from fatigue. We've noticed that when you perform many contractions in a row and if you give a period of rest some people actually come back stronger than when they first started to fatigue. So rather than going back to 100% of strength, they can go back to 105 or 107 or 8. And we're trying to uncover what the mechanisms behind that are. We look and evaluate muscle function. We have to have apparatus to isolate that muscle in a particular contraction that we're interested in. So in this case, we're looking at the shin muscles. So when we flex our foot to raise it off the ground, it's our muscles in the shin that contract. So we have to have an apparatus that mimics or resists that movement so that we can evaluate how hard the muscle is contracting. So there usually is some kind of load cell or force sensor associated with the apparatus, which is below my foot. So what, when, I try to, when I try to raise my foot, it activates the load cell beneath it. And when I want to measure muscle electrical activity, I have electrodes such as these, and I place it right on the surface, uh, skin surface. As part of the episode, we're going to be interviewing one of your grad students, Laura. Laura. I think, I think it's Lara. It's L-A-R-A. -A. I can never get it right. I can't get it right either. No, what is it? Lara? Lara. Lara. Lara Green. Lara Croft. Green. Green. Okay. All right. You're going to be hooking up to a few machines today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the machines do and what they're looking to quantify? Of course. Um, well, first, you're going to be sitting in our lovely chair. And the point of the chair is to have you seated in a position where your hips and knees are at 90 degrees. And then your foot is placed um, in this apparatus here. And you can do isometric dorsiflexion contractions, which means that when you lift your toe up, it's actually you're not actually producing any movement. You're just pulling up against a load cell which records your force. And if you lift your foot up for us and kind of wiggle it, you can see the force trace there. So this is an oscilloscope and it basically just allows us to see exactly what's happening in real time. And uh, that just allows us to be able to record things as we go. And then uh, the surface EMG that we're putting on your muscles has to be amplified. Uh, so all of that's being plugged into our top row of amplifiers and basically that's taking the teeny tiny signal which is millivolts and it's gonna, going to amplify it so that we can actually see it and uh, quantify it and as well we have of course our stimulation unit which is what we use to shock you. So obviously I was one of the best participants in this study. Yes. 
let's go ahead and uh, talk about my results. Okay, so this is uh, the entire session that we did today. Each of these are the contractions, and each of these thin lines that you see here are the twitches that we did. So we performed some baseline contractions to ensure what his maximal was. Then this was his fatigue series, and you can sort of see that the force declines, and then as he recovers a little bit, we have his five recovery contractions there. So this is the data that we will use um, to basically see how he did uh, fatiguing and recovering. And if we zoom in here, you can actually see what an individual twitch looks like. So we have the small lift and force, and we have each of the um, channels that have been activated by the twitch. So I just want to know what you enjoy most about your research. Um, well, I would say that I enjoy the fact that I get to do a lot of different things. So of course, I'm, you see that I'm in lab testing people, but obviously there's a lot behind the scenes as well. Um, so we do a lot of computer programming because the signals that we get from the EMG looks like squiggles. So we use computer programming to break those down and um, we write our scripts to do that and I really enjoy that. And then of course you've got you know the statistics behind research. We're doing quantitative research here. Um, so that's kind of the point that I'm getting to with my research as I finish up. Um, and luckily I enjoy math, so that's a good part. And then, um, I mean, obviously data collection, I get to you know, sit and talk with people like you for an hour a day for three days, so what could be better? Your supervisor, uh, David Gabriel, recently won a Graduate Mentorship Award. Can you tell me about the nomination process for that? Yeah, it was. Uh, we were actually very happy to have him win that. We nominated him because he's been obviously an integral part of our um, process here, our, our education. Uh, so myself, um, another master's student, our PhD student, uh, Greg Inglis, and uh, some previous students all put in um, letters of to nominate him and to really uh, just show other people that um, he loves what he does and he loves to be a mentor and to do research and to teach and he just brings enjoyment to the field. That is all the time we have today on The Focus. I just want to make sure everyone's aware that no one was hurt during the filming of this episode. Above all, me. And uh, it was all in the name of science. But just to make sure, it's a little bit of payback time.